Shalom friends, welcome to another Shi'ur in Mesilat Yesharim, the path of the just written by the Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato of the 18th century, a prodigy in Torah, prodigy in the study of Kabbalah, in mysticism, and indeed all of his books really share a certain element of mysticism behind them, even if we don't see uh, directly how the mysticism is included. Just pay attention, listen to the words, and there's so much to see of that mystic aspect of what's really going on behind the scenes. I'm Eliyahu Shir from Chesed Be'emet. You can find my site on www.lovingkindness.co and we are up to chapter two in the Mesila Tisharim. So far, where did we get to? We studied the introduction of the Mesila Tisharim and his introduction was to tell us about the value of his book the importance of knowing what life is all about really, and how he's written this book for all of us to remind us of things that are important to us. Nothing new, he's not coming to tell us new things. If we read what we're going to read today, we all know what it says, straightforward. But he's coming to remind us and himself, as he said to us, that these things are important. And the more that we remind ourselves of this process of growth, the more successful we can become in growing ourselves. And then we moved on to chapter one. And in chapter one, we spoke about man's obligation, his duty in the world. What really was his duty? What is his duty? It is ultimately to see his purpose in life. He is not here in the world for fun and games, basically, but he's in the world for serious growth. We we'll remember, of course, where we left off, we said that Rabbi Pinchas, Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair told us that in order to succeed in our growth, we need to go through a number of levels of growth. The first level being Zahirut, which is to be careful. The second level being Zizut, which is enthusiasm, and so on and so, so forth until we reach the level of Kedusha, where we become very, very holy. Now, he said to us, this is the path that we have to go on. And now he's about to bring us into this actual path. Last week, for those who listened to the Shi'ul, will remember that we spoke about this analogy that the soul was placed into this world, into the body, in order to accumulate growth and mitzvahs to prepare itself for the world to come. Just as an analogy was given of a person who was sent to another country which was filled with diamonds. And although the country that he was in, there were no diamonds there, he was sent to the other country where he would be able to pick up as many diamonds as he could possibly find, bring it back to him to the country that he lived in, and he'd be able to live forevermore with infinite wealth, he wouldn't have to worry about anything because the other country was full with all these diamonds. And we said that the diamonds refer to the mitzvot in this physical world. And so actually we're in this world to pick up those diamonds. And if we are lazy and we think that or we've forgotten our duties, we think that everything is okay for us over here and we don't really need to pick up so many diamonds and things will be good for us. But when we leave the world and we arrive there, then we will realize in the next world just how important those diamonds were. Now today, I want to give another analogy and let's bring it with us, take it with us in everything that we do. And this is the analogy that we must remember for ourselves, that all that we are in this world is to be compared to a, the soul in the body, to be compared to a body in an astronaut suit. He's wearing an astronaut suit. A person who goes to space, he puts on the suit and off he goes to the moon. He does not go to the moon without the suit. It's pretty dangerous. I don't think he'll survive it. When we come down into this world, we are also put into a suit. That is called the body. Now, when the astronaut goes to space, he has to be very careful to follow the instructions of the ground crew. He needs to follow exactly what they say. When the ship is traveling, when the spaceship, the, the, the rocket is traveling to space, he needs to be told certain instructions. Please press this button. Please do this. Please do that. This is ground control talking to you. You need to do this. You need to do the other thing. Imagine this man going off into space, making all the decisions on his own and assuming that what he does is the correct thing. This would be very dangerous. Imagine a man landing on the moon and when he gets onto the moon, they say to him, the first thing I want to tell you is please keep your suit on. Do not take your suit off. Do not open the shield on the front of the, of the front area of the face. Don't open it, you won't be able to breathe. The man says, who are you to tell me? I am the one on space. I am the one on the moon over here in space. How dare you tell me what I should do? Then they tell him other things. They say, look where you are, we can see. 
The ground crew below here can see you need to walk 10 steps forward, five steps to the left, whatever. Don't walk back. Don't turn around. He says, who are you to tell me these things? Who are they? They're the ground crew. In front of them, they have the screens. They know exactly what's going on. And they tell this particular astronaut, there's certain things you need to do while you are there on the moon. If you follow our instructions, everything will work out okay. You will fulfill your duty and you will come back to planet Earth. All will be well and people will clap for you. You'll be in the Guinness Book of Records maybe. People will praise you. But please listen to what we got to tell you. If you take things upon your own shoulders and decide to do things according to what you want, you may not come back alive. So too, not only do we give the analogy of the person who goes to another country and he collects diamonds, but we give an addi additional analogy that here we are in a world as a soul in a body, like the astronaut in the astronaut suit. And when he goes to the moon, he has instructions, clear instructions what they want from him. And sometimes every now and again, other instructions are filtered through to him. He has to do this. He has to do that. He didn't realize he had to do it. Well, he has to do it. He has no choice. And if he accepts and, he, and he, if he decides of his own accord to do things against what the ground crew are telling him, it's going to be life-threatening. He dare not do it. The Ramchal is ground crew. And he's teaching us in the Mesilat Yisharim what we need to do on the moon. He's telling us, you're in a space suit. and you can't see everything that's going on around you. Be careful. So therefore, I want to tell you now of the things you need to be careful of. You need to listen. Many of us, in our arrogance, will say, who is this man to tell me what I should do? He lived uh, uh, 300 years ago. What, 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 do I need to, what do I need to connect with such an individual like this for? He doesn't know how I live today. Society is modern. I don't need to hear his instructions from the old days. Well, if he had a cell phone, do you think he would have said those same comments? He wouldn't know how distracting the cell phone is, how important it is to click on and see the internet every five minutes, my email, let me check this, send an SMS, let's send this person this type of message and that type and the picture and some music. I need to do these things. This is modern society. I don't have time to waste on how to improve myself and grow in all sorts of ways that this man who lived 300 years ago without a cell phone is telling me how to behave. And he never had a television set to be able to see wonderful productions, art and classics and all sorts of things on the television screen. Well, he lived 300 years ago. Who is he to tell me how to live today? I'm living in a modern society and I will live according to the rules of the modern society. But the Ramchal is ground crew. He can see what's happening to the astronaut who's on the moon. And he's telling that astronaut, you might think, that I'm in another place. You might think I'm in another time, but I can tell you that I know the nature of the soul and I know its purpose in this world through my studies, through my cleaving to Hashem, through my own Kedusha. I can tell you that I've connected with these concepts and I want to teach you these concepts so that when you will be careful of these particular matters, then you too are going to be successful and fulfill your role in life. And so we begin chapter two. This is the chapter which is called Zahirut. Zahirut means to be careful. And what does it mean to be careful? Vihine, behold, in Yan Hazahirus, this matter of being careful, who she this is that Shiyya Adam Nishar Masab Ubi Inyanav. That a person should be careful in his actions and in all the things that he does. Klumar, that means to say, when a person is involved in whatever activity he's involved in, let him be careful. Let him contemplate, let him search out, investigate on his actions and on his ways. Everybody needs to look clearly at the roads that they're on. Hatovim heim im law. Is what he is doing good or not? How many of us really actively ever go to sleep at night and do what's called Kishpon Hanifish, an accounting of the soul? Before I close my eyes, I do the following I say to myself, I woke up this morning at five o'clock in the morning. 
The first thing I did was I made myself a cup of coffee. And then I studied some Torah and I made the brachot. Or perhaps I made the brachot before, which is the way I should do it. It makes no difference because whatever a person does, he does. This is an example of what a person is doing. Maybe he did have the coffee before. It makes no difference. So anyway, he had the coffee. He did the brachot. He studied some Torah. And then afterwards, he shouted at the family. Seems like everybody was still sleeping at five o'clock and he was up. He felt everybody else should be up. So he gave them a, a bit of a shout. He told them, everybody get up. It's time to get up already. It's late. It's five o'clock in the morning. It's late for everybody. Let's get going. Shouted at them. He got them out of bed. They got going. He felt good about it. He carried on his life. And he carried on the day. And he did whatever he had to do. And anyway, when he goes to sleep at night, he begins to work through the day. And he says to himself, you know what? Maybe I should have had the coffee later. Did I need to have the coffee so early? I could have studied the Torah first, not interrupted myself with the coffee before. God came first, then the coffee came second. Or he says to himself, you know what? When I studied Torah in the morning, I did well. I did well. Then he says to himself, hold on a second. What type of Torah was I studying? I remember what happened now, he says. I read a verse or two, and the next thing I know, I was thinking about the news. Oh, it wasn't so good. So I was sitting and studying Torah for this hour, but for half an hour of the hour, I was thinking about the daily news. It wasn't so good. Then he thinks to himself, you know, I shouted at the family to wake up. What concern is it of mine that they were sleeping at five o'clock? They only had to get up at six o'clock. It wasn't necessary for me to shout and scream and embarrass everybody, hurt them. Anyway, he works through the day and he examines exactly what he did throughout the day. And then he says to himself, I know what I did was good and I know what I did that was bad. And at that point in time, he closes off the evening thinking to himself about the importance of how he'll improve himself the next day based upon his behavior of the previous day. Here we come to the days of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, days of judgment. Well, what is a judgment day really all about? A judgment day is preparing, one, preparing one's case for the judge, for the lawyers. We need to get into the courtroom and we need to say, but Your Honor, this is what we did. But Your Honor, we didn't do that. And the accuser will say, but you did do that, didn't you? And we have to admit, yes, we did do that. And whatever the case may be, it all comes out in the courtrooms. Well, we need to do that every day of our lives. We need to examine ourselves every day of our lives. What are we doing with our lives? The good that we do, put a tick next to it. Fantastic. Maybe even say, do it better. When it's bad, we say, wrong thing. I shouldn't be doing it. I have to work on myself. I can't do that again. I examine myself to see where I went right to pursue righteousness. And I examine myself where I went wrong in order to avoid that stumbling block and doing that same thing wrong again. This is what the Ramchal is saying to us. We need to pay attention on all of one's actions and ways, if they're good or they're not. In order not to leave over one's soul for the danger of destruction, God forbid, and a person shouldn't walk in his normal manner, in an ordinary manner, meaning in a general sense, like a blind person in darkness. The Ramchal warns us a terrible thing here. Don't walk around life like a, bla a blind man in the darkness. I should just point out over here, we've got two problems. One, the fellow is blind. The second is walking in darkness. Well, you can have a blind man who walks around in the light and a blind man who walks around in the darkness. I can tell you that the blind man who walks around in the darkness is even worse off than the blind man who walks around in the light. Because the blind man who walks around in the light at least has other people who can see, who can guide him. But the blind man who walks in the dark will not even have access to the people who can see, who can guide him in the right path. So the Ramchal is telling us we have a problem. Don't walk around life like a blind man in darkness. It's a dangerous thing. Vihine, behold, zetavar shasekel yichayvehu vadai. This is the thing that one's intelligence, one's mind, obligates one in uncertainty. Ki acharei sheyesh la adam deya vahaskel. Since a person was given a special gift by God, he is not an animal. He was given a special gift. He has intelligence. He has knowledge and intelligence. He has a mind that can think. Some people even go to university and they get big degrees. Well, don't they have minds to think? Well, of course they have minds to think. And the greater, 
the person develops in his intellect, isn't that surely a proof all the more so of what a type of intelligence this person has? Well, if he has intelligence, he needs to use his intelligence correctly, not like the blind man walking in the dark. He must save himself. And to flee his soul from destruction. The Ramchal cries out. How can it be possible that a person desires to hide his eyes away from being saved? Imagine, for example, a person stranded on a beach. And there's no one around for miles to save him. So what he does is kind of like he hangs around and he puts his, literally, we could say, you know, like an ostrich, he puts his head into the sand or he simply sits on the rock somewhere, hoping and praying that miraculously somebody will come to save him. Well, if he wants to be saved, at least let him do something constructive. What could he do, for example? He could write in the sand, S-O-S. That's a good one. And then if there's anything flying above him, maybe they'll see the S-O-S. What else could he do? He could stand around by where the end of the beach is towards the sea, and he could look out. He could see, are there any ships coming? Hey, there's a ship over there. He says to himself, I have a uh, fire. I have some logs over here. Let me light the fire. And maybe as I move my hands around with the fire going, the people on the ship will notice me and they'll come to save me. Or maybe I'll look in the sky and maybe there'll be a helicopter or something flying above. And again, I'll shake my hands to create attention. Save me, save me. Because if not, I'll be stranded on this island, on the beach here, and nobody will save me. Says the Ramchal, how can it be that a person a normal person will hide his eyes away from being saved. If a person is normal and he realizes he has a duty in this world, why does he turn his attention away from the obligation that awaits him in this world to attend to the goal that he's acquired, required to, to reach in this world? There is no greater debasement and foolishness and evil from this certainly there's nothing worse and a person who does this he is less great than the animals he is less great than the animals and of wild animals that it's their nature to guard themselves Animals have a natural instinct to do everything that they can to protect themselves, to work together, to guard themselves, to live as long as they can with the conditions that life has given them, and to always be aware of any dangers that surround them. All the time, animals are aware of dangers that surround them. So too, he says, but a person who doesn't pay attention to all the dangers in all sincerity, in all honesty, this person is less than an animal. Lishmor tatzmam, to guard themselves. But al and therefore, yivrechu v'yanusu mikol ma sheyira elahim, heyoto mazik lahim. And so it is the nature of animals that they flee, they run away from everything that looks to them to be a danger. This is the nature of an animal. It's always alert. The lions, are watching around, is there any animal that is after them? The crocodile is watching all the time, is there an animal after them? The buck and the deer are looking around, is the lion around, is the crocodile around? Each animal is aware that there are dangers around it, it needs to take care to protect itself, if it's going to live, of course. Well, so too, a human being in this world needs to be aware that there are serious dangers in this world. He needs to look around. He needs to protect himself and be aware that life is a lot more serious than he imagined it to be. And if he's not aware, he is worse than an animal and he behaves in the way like a blind man would behave in the dark. 
a person who walks around in the world without contemplation, if what he's doing in his way is good or bad, he's like a blind person who goes on the side of the river, on the river bank. That certainly the danger of walking there is certainly a great, great danger. And it's more likely that you'll be put in a position of bad than being saved. He's walking along the river bank. He's not paying any attention. He's a blind man walking along the river bank, not paying any attention, aware of the fact that the slightest misstep out of place, he'll fall into the river and he will die. Ki olam, because indeed could be, chesaron hashmira, lacking guarding oneself. On account of being blind, hativi, which is natural, and natural blindness, or or whether a person is blind of his own free will, which means he's not prepared to see the dangers around him. I don't need to see that danger, he says. I don't need to see that. Don't tell me about such things. Do you think I need? You think that's dangerous? I don't need to know about it. I need to get on with my life. I have a life to live. Please let me get on with it. But, but, but excuse me, you tell him. You're walking along the river bank over here on the side. One step in the wrong direction, you could fall off and, and die. Don't tell me that. I don't need to hear those things. I'm enjoying my life. In fact, they're filming me for a video so that the world can see what a great talented person I am to be able to walk on the very side over here. And yet I, I will never fall over. I will never die. I'm so in charge of everything of my life. So there is no difference between a person who is born blind or a person who acts in a manner as if he is blind. Dahainu, which means stimasa enayim, when a person closes one's eyes, with a with a choice and with a chafetz uh, with a desire, he does it on purpose. Echad who? It's all one and the same thing. The Ramchal comes to teach us: be aware of your life. There is a purpose to it, as we learned in the previous chapter, and he tells us: focus on the good that we're doing. Focus on that that is not good. When it comes to good things, push ahead. When it comes to bad things, examine them, push them aside. Stay away from them. Be a person who is responsible for his own deeds, for his own actions. Be aware that every single thing that we do has a judgment to it. I'll just end off very quickly. We've run out of time, but I'll just share one story. It's a favorite of mine, and I like to say it every now and again. I heard the story from Rabbi Moshe Sternbach, the head of the Eid Haredis in Israel. He tells a story about a person who goes to a restaurant. A person walks into the restaurant, they greet him, and they say to him, welcome, sir, welcome, ma'am, big smile on their face. Would you like uh, to join us this evening here? The person says, yes, certainly. Please come through, happy smile on their face. Would you like a table for two, three, four? What would it be? Oh, I'll take a table for six. Hmm, the waiter says, how many will be joining? He says, two. But you want the table for six? Yes. Please, sir, come and take a table for six. He sits down. They present him with a menu. On the menu, he can eat whatever he wants to. He can have the steak, the chops, the steak and the chops and the fish. Not together, because unluckily speaking, we don't eat the steak and the chops and the fish, everything together. We make a separation. And he says afterwards, I'd like a roll, fancy roll. I'd like some uh, hors d'oeuvres. I'd like some dessert and a lovely pot of ice cream at the end. The most expensive. Yes, sir. He writes, the waiter writes down all these things. Would you like some wine with your meal? Yes. What do you have? He asks the waiter. We have a splendid blend of X, Y, Z. This was, this was uh, prepared. 30 years ago, this one. This is our finest. This one was prepared 20 years ago. This one was 10 years ago. This one was just taken off the, uh, came directly from the uh, vineyard. Okay, he says, I'll take the 40 year old wine. Yes, sir. How much would you like of that? I want for me and my wife, of course. And you know what? 
give the others who are sitting here some as well. Yes, sir. He does it. He has this fantastic meal. They give him a sweetie at the end of the meal. All is well. And he's about to stand up and walk out. And suddenly, they give him a piece of paper. Looks at the piece of paper. He says, uh, what is this? This is your bill, sir. What? The bill? What are you talking about? Well, I explained to him, when you ordered all of these things, there was a price to pay for all the things that you've ordered. The man says, well, I didn't realize that. Had I known that things cost so much, I would never have ordered all these things. Why were you so happy to me? Why were you so, you had such a happy face. You offered me all these things. You gave me a menu with all these things on it. The waiter says you can choose whatever you want. But whatever you choose, you have to pay for at the end of the meal. And so too, that is what life is about. Life is that we are in a restaurant. We can order whatever we want to. But we must remember that at the moment that we leave the restaurant, they will present us with a bill and we must pay for everything that we have ordered. Let us listen to the words of the Ramchal now before it is too late. And let us think about the things that we do in our life. Is it good? Is it bad? If it is good, let us continue. If it is bad, we must refrain from it. We need to grow correctly. We need to stay away from anything dangerous so that we'll be able to progress and do things that are ultimately good. We've reached the end of the shiur. We've even gone over. Thank you for joining me. I'm Eliyahu Shir from Chesed Ve'emet, broadcasting from the Holy City of Yerushalayim. And my site can be found on www.lovingkindness.co. If you've enjoyed the shiur, please click on the like button. Please share my video with friends and family. We need to get out to as many people as we can, and you can help us to achieve this goal. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and click on the bell button to be notified of future shiurim. Otherwise, when the new shiurim come out, you won't know that they're available. If you would like to become a partner in our activities, please visit our site, lovingkindness.co, and take a part in some way to help us to achieve further goals, to be able to produce further videos, and to be able to, te to teach even more and give more of ourselves, ultimately giving you the type of teaching that you might enjoy later on. We're always available for lessons one-on-one -on -one if you want to join us, or alternatively, if you wish to ask a question, you're welcome to put something in the comment section below, or alternatively, to send a personal question on the website, and I'd be happy to respond and discuss all matters of Torah and life with you as much as you want to. Thanks again for joining me. I wish you everything of the best, and I look forward to another Shi'ur in the near future with you. Keep well, wishing you the best. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.